We are celebrating the 50th anniversary of the Apollo 11 mission to the moon. Tonight, we have a one-hour special on this historic moment, which will include interviews with those who saw everything happen from mission control. That includes one man who made some history of his own while helping with the mission. Houston space reporter Roseanne Aragon live at Johnson Space Center with his story. Roseanne. This man had his fate in his name. His name was Bill Moon, and he was one of the hardworking members of Mission Control. He jumped into the Apollo mission to start his career, and he would go on to work on every manned mission after that. We uh, took it as a challenge from the president to go to the moon by the end of the de decade. A call to do what no one had ever done. So everybody was uptight, but they were ready for any, any, any circumstances that would ca cause us to abort. But the guys were ready. I mean, we trained hard. You know, we, we did all the build up to the missions from all the other flights. Bill Moon, the son of two Chinese immigrants, grew up in rural Mississippi. Despite facing racial tensions growing up in the Jim Crow South, Moon persevered. As a 20-something year old, he went to NASA to begin training to become an e-com, working with electrical, environmental, consumables, and mechanical systems. 37 years. Uh, yes, people have asked me, why didn't you change jobs. Well, not too many people get to fly spacecrafts, especially to the moon. Perhaps his last name sealed his destiny. Little did he know he'd become the first Asian American to work in mission control and go on to work every manned space program before he retired. But even today... I don't think you find too many people that use the word I. They use the word we. July 20th, 1969, the Eagle was headed to land. Moon worked with data in the SSR, giving leaders critical information. We did it with slide rules and pencils and, and plots, hand plots. The pressure was on. Two, niner. On July 20th, 1969. We made it. I mean, it's, it's just a testament between NASA and all the contractors that, and the crew that they built the, a good vehicle. But with little time to rejoice as the mission continued to the minute, the real celebration was on July 24th, splashdown in the Pacific Ocean. Okay, open the doors, we can come in, and this when the crew comes out and we wave American flags and smoke cigars, and then we can have our celebration then. And today they are proud after carrying the weight of 400,000 people's faith. The world was watching, I think. And yes, the world was watching. Moon would go on to earn a spot as the lead e-com controller for Apollo 16 and 17. To this day, he still says the success of the program was because of the surrounding communities, including the engineering community and the people who live here. Reporting live from the Johnson Space Center, Roseanne Aragon, KPRC, Channel 2 News.